Welcome to Thrive in China podcast with me, Christina Kohler Kaluchia from Woodburn Accountants and Advisors. Our masterclass series on how to review and analyze the results of your China business, which will highlight how to review your company. Once your China company is established and it's running well, you may be inclined to let things continue to run as they are. However, it is time to plan again. After the crucial early stages, you should regularly review your progress, identify how you can make the most of the market position you have established, and decide where to take your China business next. You will need to revisit and update your China business plan with your new strategy in mind and make sure you, you introduce the developments you have noted. This masterclass series takes you through this essential process, detailing the stages you should go through to assess how well your China company is performing, highlighting your strengths and areas that could be improved, and most importantly, suggesting a roadmap of actions that you need to take to implement those improvements that you have identified. My name is Christina Kohler Kaluccia, and I'm a Hong Kong born European with over 20 years experience in helping foreign investors enter the China and Hong Kong market. My mission is to help foreign investors, leaders, entrepreneurs avoid the most common obstacles that they encounter along their China business journey for them to accelerate their profitability. I hope you enjoy the series. We are going to now kick off session three, which is the value of having an on the ground finance team in China. Um, so let's get cracking. Um, I want to start off with, again, what are the pain points that foreign investors face when dealing with Chinese accountants? Or what are the pain points they could face? The first is a lack of transparency. The second is a lack of understanding and language capabilities. The third would be a lack of communication. And the fourth would be spending more money on less quality compared to their own home jurisdiction finance team. So how can this all happen? Well, the first thing that you all have to understand that is in China, um, you follow PRC GAAP, which are the general and accounting principles of China which are different from the Western world. This can cause all four of these things to happen because you yourself are not educated on the accounting, tax, and HR system, so i.e. the administrative system associated with maintaining an entity in China. The lack of transparency comes from the fact that you do, <laughs> and I don't mean to put all the blame on you, but you, do not instruct that Chinese accountant on what information is critical for you, how that information is delivered, uh, etc. Chinese accountants will produce Chinese accounting reports according to how they've been educated and what they know and what also they know the tax bureaus, the state administration of foreign exchange, what the banks require. This miscommunication causes the lack of transparency because you're clueless about what they're sending you. There's a lack of understanding because you didn't educate yourself on it. There are language capable uh, language issues and language barriers, maybe because you went the cheap way and found somebody who didn't speak proper English or is not explaining things or doesn't have the capabilities to explain things in a foreign language. And you don't understand why the cost of doing accounting and tax in China is more expensive than it is in the Western world, okay? However, I have put all the blame on you because I need to defend my team and I need to defend the Chinese accountants that are actually super knowledgeable about Chinese accounting and Chinese tax. I need to defend them. And I say it from my own experience that 
I have only been able to grow and scale my business with their knowledge level, their advisory, their proactiveness with me. And a lot of it stems from also me giving them that liberty and the freedom to be able to do that. How much value do you place in your finance team? You probably think they are the pain in the putt putt department of your organization, which probably they are, but they are for a reason, for a very good reason, because they are the ones that are guiding you financially. We can't build a business without money, without cash, without financing. We need a solid finance team to support the business so that we have the ability to grow. We need a finance team that has a solid foundation in warning us if we're doing something wrong or something bad has happened. Now, I wanted to start today's presentation with what should a Chinese accountant do for you? Because I think once I list out their job functions based on their knowledge level, you'll understand why I think this is so vital to have this on the ground team. Now, the first is your startup process in China, okay? Determining the best business structure for your situation, there's always going to be a finance, finance component. Now, what I hate, 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 hate are companies that are so large that the in-house legal team and the in-house finance team do not communicate together and start discussing finance aspects of the Chinese entity without thinking about the legal aspects of the finance entity. Okay? This generally happens in larger, larger organizations that have these two separate divisions. You guys have to come together. You can't do one without the other. How you build your business and structure your business is dependent on accounting issues, tax issues, legal issues, all three of those. You also need a Chinese accountant to assist you with the financial analysis of your business plan, okay? They are going to be able to validate what you are creating. They are going to be able to give you the knowledge you need that you hadn't even thought about what happens in China into that business plan. They also need to give you the advice on the right accounting software system for your business at the different stages of your growth and your development. They need to give you advice and assistance on opening up your business bank account. Which bank? Western? Local? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? You need also this person to help you set up your accounting systems, tax systems, payroll systems, to comply with the government regulations and requirements. Now, I wanna highlight something again, because I'm referencing a client. Do not think that a Hong Kong accountant knows anything about Chinese accounts. If you think that you can outsource certain functions of your Chinese business abroad, be very, very, very careful of this. Because I wanna reiterate, Chinese GAP standards are different than the Western world. You also need advice on how to track your initial expenses as you are starting up your business and as you are, are initiating payment for daily activities, okay? You also need somebody to help and guide you between your personal expenses and your business expenses, especially if you're an entrepreneur, okay? Now, in regular business operations, you also need this Chinese accountant to ensure that independent contractors are classified as such and not employees. This comes a lot with freelancers and how IIT is declared and what are the laws and regulations in regards to working with freelancers, how your agreements should be set up that you are protected, not only from the legal side of that contract and that relationship, but also in relation to the accounting and tax side. You need to understand that you need somebody to issue e piaos or the actual original VAT fapiao invoices. You also need somebody to follow up and track the receipt of the e piaos and VAT invoices. You need somebody to explain, well, not only explain, but produce the financial statements, but also explain the financial statements so that you can understand the ins and outs of your business. You also need to guide that accountant about what breakdowns and line items you will need to analyze within your business. That has to also come from you to them, that level of communication. They're not going to know. They might group things together to make it easier for them in terms of their daily bookkeeping, 
But if you need that to be broken down, that one line item into 10 line items, that is the communication that has to be made. They are also overseeing the payroll process, the social insurance and housing fund, um, income tax, that whole HR aspect. They need to provide you on tax estimation. So when you're creating your budgets and your forecasts, what are the estimated taxes that are, might be imposed? They need to close out your books on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, because VAT is paid monthly, profits tax is paid quarterly, and then annual tax is paid annually after you've done the full year. And obviously, they are your organization arm. They are maintaining your whole filing cabinet worth of original tax statements, financial reports, vouchers, FAPIAOs, receipts, invoices, etc. Okay. And if you don't have a legal team, they're also maintaining the contracts. In the business growth stage, you have to use them to help you on areas of cash flow patterns, inventory management, pricing, business financing, they need to advise you on lease renewals. Um, can we get, they might even be the ones negotiating on that. They, if you get audited by the Chinese tax bureaus, they, they will be the ones guiding you through that process. And they will prepare you for and guide you through audits, year end audits, create financial forecasts so you can make better decisions on your business work with you to create a budget that will support your business goals, advise you, give you the resources you need. If you even want to add investors into the business or sell your business in China. Okay. So there are three stages of your growth and your scaling up where you will need a local accountant. Now the question is obviously, does it have to be somebody in-house? Can you outsource? You can absolutely outsource in the early stages of your development. However, there are a couple of triggers that I would ask you to look at, which doesn't help me in terms of promoting my business, but this is how we ethically work with our clients. One is, look at the invoices of your outsource provider, compare it with the salary levels of, in, of, of hiring accountants. If that increases uh, to balance levels, start considering hiring your own accountant just, again, to minimize cost, i.e. we're looking at costs. Uh, two, it's always better to have somebody in-house who works for you full-time and is your right-hand person. When you are working with outsource providers, this is the disadvantage. They are working with multiple clients. They will not be available at your beck and call. Impossible for them to be available at your beck and call. So if you need somebody at your beck and call immediately at a moment's notice, if you need somebody to be available at different time zones, you know, outsource providers are not going to offer that to you. So weigh out the pros and cons of outsourcing versus in-house. But definitely in these first two stages, the startup process, regular business operations, absolutely you can outsource that. But as you start growing, you really need to analyze whether it's better to have somebody in-house. Now, ultimately, there are three things why a Chinese accountant would be valuable to your business. Save you time and energy, but most importantly, save your sanity. Sometimes I feel like I'm a therapist to my clients. Um, things in China are different. Processes are different. Government bureaucracy is different. You can lose your mind around it. I lose my mind daily on my own business. And I'm 20 years into this journey. I can still lose my mind um, because of all the regulatory changes and updates that are being made and then the implementations that occur within the various government bureaus and banks and whatnot. You need an accountant that is going to release your sanity, save you time, save you energy. You also need somebody who's going to help you to make real-time decisions. Um, I find it psychologically a roadblock when I have to make all the decisions, there are moments where I just somebody, I just want somebody to make a decision for me. Having that brainstorming arm, having somebody to talk to about your numbers to help you pivot and make sudden changes is so important. So, so important. Um, you know, you might be even a very large organization 
you might be very large in your home jurisdiction, but you might only have two people in China and you're the one who has to make decisions about the China business. The guys in their headquarters are sort of like, it's up to you. You're the lead, you're the manager, you make the decision. It can sometimes be very overwhelming when you have to make decisions constantly that it's just nice to have somebody to brainstorm. And the other aspect is planning for the future. I said in session one that we need to build a community of individuals that are gonna help us forecast and build the strategy plan for China or help us pivot the strategy plan for China. Um, part of that is gonna come from HQ, part of that is gonna come from sales, but a big, big, big part of it is also going to come from your finance team. If there is one area that I would highlight to anybody is invest in an excellent accountant. Uh, invest in those resources. Uh, people don't necessarily budget for it, and I think it's wrong that they don't budget for it. Now, how to qualify accountants in China can be very difficult, especially if you're not familiar with PRC gap regulations and, um, and, and how to test their knowledge levels, right? But if you subscribe to corporate service providers newsletters, not just Woodburns, but anybody's, you will anyway get your own updated knowledge level on what's happening in China. Test that, right? If you get, I don't know, an updated message from Woodburn saying, oh, individual income tax for expatriates, um, the uh, special uh, or the allowance deductions have now been extended to December 27th, uh, to um, uh, that's December 31st, 2027, ask them if they know this, right? So you yourself can test certain things about the tax knowledge and whatnot by just subscribing to a variety of different corporate service providers, newsletters, and getting yourself updated and using that knowledge level to test them. The other is the business acumen. So understanding in their previous ex job experiences, how did they help make decisions? Um, what decisions did they help in? Why did they make those, those suggestions or recommendations? Um, the other is presentation prowess. So I ask this always in the final round of any interview that I do for senior managers is, can you prepare a presentation for me? Uh, in that presentation, I want the first part to be about when you are onboarded at Woodburn, what are the requirements you have in terms of training? onboarding, um, et cetera. Then the second part is in the in your probation period, I usually give a six month probation period, in the first six months of joining Woodburn, what will be your action points to get familiar with the business and to get acclimatized within the business? What will you also be looking at in order to review the business? And the third step, I will say, in your previous job experiences, what actions did you take to improve businesses um, and the question then that highlights the end of the presentation is, do you think these could fit into Woodburn based on our, our initial interviews? The next is technical abilities. It's understanding what software systems have they utilized in the past. It's understanding who their network is from a technical aspect. Um, and it's a bit up to, you know, leads up with number one, which is updating their, their knowledge level. The other is the emotional intelligence. I only want to work with people who show emotion. Um, I need to pe be able to read people's faces. If they are just solid all the time, it's hard for me to gauge what they're feeling, whether they're happy with working with me or not. So I, I do need a certain level of emotional intelligence. Not always so easy to find with accountants. Um, as my son would always say, um, finance people are nerds. Um, uh, that's the stereotype, isn't it? And so uh, I do need a bit of that emotional intelligence. Number six is the internal auditing cap capabilities. You can always get an external auditor to come in and review your business, but you also, if you're going to hire somebody, you want that person to have the capabilities to every once a quarter biannually do an internal audit themselves in the business to make suggestions on how to improve. Number seven is the management and leadership strength. And I have put in brackets here, are they prepared to be the bad guys? Finance teams generally are the bad guys. They are the ones who stop the marketing team from doing marketing initiatives because they say there's no money. They are the ones who say to the sales guys, stop traveling. We don't have enough money. 
they are the guys who go to operations and say, you want a new piece of equipment? Forget it. Not happening in this fiscal year. They are the bad guys because they are doing the financial controlling and everybody sees them as the bad guys. But their job is good. They are there to grow and scale the business to make sure the company is more profitable. Um, if you are in the marketing BD team or sales team or supply chain team or merchandising team and you need to have a higher budget available to you, you should have to convince the finance team for that money. So I'm always looking in the finance people that I'm hiring as an outsource provider working with my clients is do they have good management styles? Are they ready to put their foot down to the local staff and say, no, this is not what your HR HQ has requested. We need to set things up because you will find that the local teams are coming up to the finance team and saying, please, 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 I'll do you a favor if you give me this. Da, 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 da. We need strong people to say no when it is necessary to say no. The next is being proactive and gaining new skills. I want um, my accountants to be proactive. I want them to come to me and not always me having to go to them. Um, I'm also looking for accountants who are flexible enough to want to learn new skills. You know, you will find, for example, when you interview accountants, they've only got AR and AP experience. They've not ever done inventory checks. They've never created a, a financial management report. Now I'm talking about younger people. You need to have people who are willing to learn with your organization. Um, you need to have good to excellent communication skills in my, and, and because of point eight, ultimately you will probably be paying more. Okay. Now to start your business with your Chinese accountants, what steps should you be taking? Right. You need to create a budget for the China business, set KPI targets. You might do that yourself. I would always recommend though, that you val get that validated. You got to choose an accounting software system. The question is what software system? Talk to software companies yourself to understand what their capabilities are and make sure you've got um, after sales service teams of those software companies based in China. You need people to implement and provide training for the software systems. You've got to create your charts of accounts in as much detail as you want. Um, and there are specific cat um, uh, how do you say there are nitty-gritty details in regards to the charts of accounts that are specific to china that you also need to be aware about you just can't create numbers out of thin air the question is do you create one set of books or do you create two sets of books if you want to understand more about the chinese gap system definitely take a look at my webinars that are up on our youtube channel but in china your accounting system will be based on what I call as a fa piao accounting system. It's about the issuance of fa piaos, when have they been issued, and the receipt of those fa piaos. That will be your first set of books. That is what is guided in China. That is what those reports are submitted to the tax bureaus, and those reports are audited. Can you do accruals in China? Yes, you can do accruals in China. Um, however, it might be difficult to do accruals for everything, so that is why you might have two sets of books. Obtain weekly bank information. Um, you want to set up a system process where you understand what your bank balances are, what your payables have been, what your receivables have been, what are the overseas incoming payments that have come in, what are the overseas outgoing payments that have to be made, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, I have a weekly meeting with my finance person. Um, and actually, it's the first meeting of the week. <laughs> Um, it's the first meeting of the week because I do review over the weekend my bank balances. I do review my accounts receivables and we go through the results of the company on a weekly basis. Uh, you can also do that on a Friday. You can do it on whatever day of the week you like. Monday mornings has been what's convenient for me. If there are things that are then popping up, I've got my accountant on my WeChat. I give a call. If they don't answer, I know they're busy. And hence, I send a message and say, call me back or whatever. But I am proactive in making sure I get the information I need right there and then from them. That communication level is constant. Constant. Okay. Um, it is important to have that weekly conversation, if not twice a week, if not three times a week. I then have that one-to-one -one meeting, but then I have also other meetings throughout the week in evolving in our business uh, with various departments where then this person is also involved.
you need to receive a deadline. You need, sorry, you need to provide a deadline for when you want to receive your financial management reports. You need to set up meetings to review those reports line item by line item and review them, the budget against the actuals. Review whether your targets are actually achievable. Setting up a meeting to review the reports. Um, oh, those two lines are the same. And then obviously, once you've done that review, you've got to reforecast your budget, amend accordingly, and then review once again and again and again. And again. So things that you can do, proactive points you can do is create an action plan of the next steps to improve efficiencies and handle cost controlling. Openly ask them what their pain points are. What are their problem points? Are, um, what are their, is it communication? Is it interdepartmental? What are their pain points? Are you an obstacle? Sometimes it's hard to hear that, but you have to hear it, right? You've got to discuss growth with them, investment plans, product lines, service lines, eliminating costs, create forecasted simulations, et cetera. And there are software systems that can help do this, guys. But it's just important to have this action plan in place and have also um, these things in your diary. I have them in my diary. They're fixed. And stuff can pop up where you can't hold that meeting, you postpone it to the next day or the day after. You and your accountants have to be flexible enough to be able to, to move this on. You should be speaking to your accountant daily, okay, to understand what is going on with your business. And I certainly do that. I do it daily. So that is the end of session three. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. Any materials from this episode can be found in the show notes. Now, can Woodburn help you? I am offering a free 30-minute call where we discuss the obstacles you are encountering on your China business journey and how we can help accelerate that success. The link to my diary is in the show notes. I look forward to speaking with you.